Warning, this presentation is not about the court case. I'm not going to be covering evidence. For the first time ever in entertainment history, get ready to hear the complete publicized and unpublicized stories of the Depp Heard saga put together by me, your humble pop culture f- like you've never heard it before. This is simply a story about two stars blessed by destiny and how they fell in love. This is the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard story, the complete saga. A cursed casting. February the 5th, 2009. It was raining, I remember. News comes out about Johnny Depp's upcoming passion project, The Run Diary. There's been a new addition to the cast, a relative newcomer who so far had only been cast in small roles in more modest movies. Amber Heard was a new name on everyone's lips. If you knew about her at all, you probably saw her playing Seth Rogen's high school age girlfriend in Pineapple Express. If you were a little spunky, maybe you saw her play a dramatic lead in one of however many horror flicks she shot back then. Which is why it was so surprising when she was announced as the female lead in Johnny Depp's film. I mean, Scarlett Johansson auditioned, so did Keira Knightley. However, Johnny saw something special in Amber, perfect for the role, and personally selected her for the film. The scene was set. Principal photography began on March the 25th, 2009 in Puerto Rico and ended around July. In that time, we would get a couple hottie pics of Johnny, but nothing of the two stars together, making magic on screen. In fact, the whole of 2010 was a pretty empty year for the two star-crossed lovers. Apart from Amber doing a piece with Vulture, in which she shared how she's fine with not enough clothing, some of my films have required more nudity than others, she explained. There wasn't really any news of Johnny and Amber or of the movie. But things got exciting again the following April. In the French magazine Voici, pictures were published that appeared to show Johnny kissing a woman who wasn't his wife, Vanessa. Anyways, they appeared to show him kissing his publicist, Robin Baum, who actually had dated a client before, the actor Stephen Dorff. Although the pictures were released with the headline, Are Johnny and Vanessa heading for a split? We never heard about any interrelationship troubles they might have caused, and Johnny and Vanessa never commented on them. They're only important as to mark the first time rumors of trouble within Johnny and and Vanessa's relationship were spread. Later on in the year, we get the first ever pictures of our glorious couple at the premiere for their special new movie, which turned out to be a massive flop. Opening on the 13th of October 2011, the opening weekend produced $3.8 million and the overall box office fell $15 million short of its $45 million budget. Big flop. She's over. However, Johnny and Amber seemed totally unaware of how crap their movie was, and in every interview, they would speak at length on how amazing they found each other. Uh, you know, Johnny is a wonderful person to work with. He's just a true artist and is so wonderful to be around, and I'm very lucky. Meeting uh, an actress like Amber Heard, who is a, who's, um, she's of another era, you know. I mean, it's, it's like walking into a room and meeting um, um, Lauren Bacall or, 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 or uh, Betty Davis or, you know, any of the, the sort of great Veronica Lake or... She's quite, she's quite something, you know, she's very special. Although maybe Johnny was just drunk because around this time it started to really hit the fan with Vanessa. In October, reports came out about Johnny allegedly falling over while signing autographs, apparently drunk. The next month, a Vanity Fair profile described how Johnny insisted on going gambling at the Ritz Casino in London and ended up with the interviewer finding him asleep in one of the hotel's toilets. The Daily Mail also report that Johnny turned up at a New York nightclub with seven women in tow, drinking, dancing with models and acting like a bachelor. That may or may not be true, but for the drama, let's just say it is. 
Vanessa had had enough. Her quote given in an interview conducted just before Christmas that year while she was staying alone in the £9,000 a night presidential suite of the Park Hyatt Hotel in Paris pretty much summarised the inner turmoil going on in her mind and relationship. Asked if she might play Simone de Beauvoir in a film about the feminist trouble affair with the writer Nelson Algren to be played by Johnny, she said... If the film was to come out, it would have a particular resonance. The drama. 2012. Have you heard the news? January 9th, 2012. Johnny and Vanessa reported on the rocks. A source tells Radar Online, people around him are worried about how Johnny is doing because he and Vanessa seem so fractured right now. Johnny isn't handling anything well right now. Johnny has started reaching out to lawyers, probably to quietly discuss how to get out of the relationship. They're not married, but they've been together for years and have kids together, so it isn't as easy as just breaking up. Johnny is so talented at acting, but he doesn't seem able to hide how badly things are going right now. This report would mark the beginning of an incredibly dramatic decade. While Vanessa was pictured going out shopping with 12-year-old daughter Lily Rose at the Grove in West Hollywood, she was probably unaware of the literal storm that was about to hit her family. Two weeks later, multiple outlets report that Johnny and Vanessa are living sad separate lives and the relationship is all but officially finished. Vanessa was also quoted speaking of her thoughts on love in Stylist magazine, I believe in love and I want to believe that it lasts forever, but I'm like everyone else, you have to take things a day at a time and you can never know what comes next. All you can do is hope and love and live. It's important to note that by this time, Johnny and Amber had probably just started dating or had maybe already been dating since late 2011. No matter how much Vanessa tried to dispel the rumours of a breakup, whenever I'm seen eating peas, people say I'm pregnant. Whenever I'm visiting a city, it means I'm buying a house. Every winter we break up and every summer we get back together. I've been getting married every summer for the last 15 years. So if on top of that, I have to react to each rumour, it didn't help that Amber was pictured flying to Las Vegas with Johnny on his private jet, months after the Rum Diary promo tour had ended. Johnny also tried denying the breakup to the Sun paper, of all papers, at the Dark Shadows London premiere on the 11th of May 2012, saying, He said, quote, the rumours are not true. They are absolutely not true. No matter what I say about this, people believe the opposite. I can't say enough about it not being over. And then, it came. First, Vanessa out alone in this iconic look on the 22nd of May, but then a month later, on the 19th of June 2012, People magazine announced, Johnny Depp and Vanessa Pahadi announced they have split after 14 years. According to People tonight, they tried for months, with the source telling the publication, they've tried for months to save the relationship, but have known for weeks that it couldn't be saved. Well, of course it couldn't have been saved. Johnny bought Amber a horse literally two days later. Here she is talking about it nearly a decade later. So going back to the filming of The Lone Ranger, what if anything did Mr. Depp do with respect to a horse? Junction leading. What if anything? Overruled. Okay. Uh, Johnny at one point insisted on buying me a horse. And I, of course, said that's ex extravagant. I, there's no way I could accept that. That's how, also, how will I take care of that horse? You know, it's just it's so extravagant. So I said no, of course. Eventually, he got a hold of my dad and worked it out with my dad, like what kind of horse to buy, and then showed me a picture of this horse and said, it's yours. It's, it's, it's coming here. I think it was being transported and he said, you know, that he had my dad's help on it, picking out. And, you know, I grew up on, on my dad's horses. You know, I grew up riding with my dad. So, you know, I, I went, I had, I had um, resisted for, I think about like a month and a half or something of him kind of bringing up the idea and me saying, that's, a crazy gift, no thank you, no, that's incredibly generous, but I couldn't accept to all of a sudden I had a cult. And then on the 20th of June, 
Amber Heard splits with girlfriend as rumours of relationship with newly single Depp Ray John. Despite her being pictured with Tasia the next day, her now ex-girlfriend, and then again on 12th of July, Tasia looking a lot less happy, Amber was now officially a free agent, free to date whoever with no chance of promiscuity accusations being thrown her way. This was her big chance. However, it wasn't such an easy ride. After a source tells Now Magazine on the 11th of July, Vanessa's devastated that Johnny's dumped her. She blames Amber and calls her a man-stealing two-bit nobody and has vowed to not let her anywhere near their children. Well, Vanessa didn't have to worry because a week later, reports came out that Amber was fed up with the drama surrounding their romance and needed some time to think about what she wanted from the relationship. 2012 was a pretty crazy year for Johnny, of course with the breakup to his partner of 14 years, but also with filming a lot of new movies, his life was pretty hectic. It's understandable that Amber felt she needed some time to think about things. Johnny went on holiday with Vanessa and their kids just a few days later and by September Vanessa was over being a bitter cow. Getting back into the dating pool with Carla Bruni's ex-boyfriend singer Biole. He was introduced to her by Karl Lagerfels. That's hot. Leaving Johnny and Amber with space to rekindle their romance. Page Six reported the pair allegedly getting heavy with some celebrity PDA at an LA nightclub on the 10th of November. A few days later, a source would tell The Sun just how Johnny won her back. Although Amber and Johnny have electric chemistry, she felt that as they are both out of long-term relationships, they needed to be single for a while. Johnny didn't give up though, he missed her so much over the summer. They both love literature and the way he tried to win her back totally worked. Once they flew to his island in the Bahamas for a romantic break a couple of weeks ago, they were back on as a couple. Johnny is the type to fall hard and he's vowed not to let a girl like Amber, who's beautiful and intelligent, slip through his fingers. I guess he failed at that part. Just before the new year, Johnny is pictured getting an affectionate welcome from a mystery blonde as he boards his private jet. Stepping on board his private jet, a beer in hand, Johnny Depp received a warm hug from a mystery blonde. Now that line's really important. In court, Johnny has admitted to abusing alcohol and pain medication during a period of time before December 2012 and then enjoying a space of, let's say, light sobriety from December 12 to April 2013. He then admits to falling off the wagon before the first alleged incident of physical abuse. 2013, shit goes down. Right before shit really hit the fan, allegedly, Johnny and Amber make it official, holding hands at a Rolling Stones concert at trendy LA nightclub Echoplex. US Weekly also reports that Johnny managed to win Amber back by building a replica bar just like the one from The Rum Diary. He had a bar built on his Bahamas property to look exactly like the one in The Rum Diary. The set designer created the plans. They are so in love. That's what the public saw, that's what the public heard. This is what went on, apparently, behind the scenes. Sometime during early March 2013, Amber claims that while at their LA apartment, Johnny slapped her three times and knocked her to the floor, all because she made a joke about his Wino Forever tattoo, which is what he got his Winona Forever tattoo changed to after Winona Ryder and him broke up. Amber claims to have text messages from him in which he apologizes for turning into the monster, but Johnny says he doesn't remember the conversation and categorically denies hitting Amber. Next. March the 22nd, the disco bloodbath as Johnny calls it. He allegedly drank some whiskey and did some coke, apparently accused Amber of having an affair with a male friend, then backhanded her while wearing several heavy rings, striking her on the mouth and teeth, allegedly. Johnny admits to then removing a painting made by Amber's former girlfriend, Tassia Van Rie, from the war. Amber claims he tried to light it on fire. She also claims that he hit her so hard that blood from her lip landed on the wall. Listeners, you be the judge. They posed for this photo after the alleged incident. Amber claims that she was hiding her bruise with her hair. Johnny claims that the photo shows that Amber didn't have a split lip or any facial injuries. What is the truth? Will we ever know? You tell me.
During this month of alleged mayhem, Amber was becoming pretty popular with the tabloids. If only they knew what story she was hiding back at home. They seemed more interested in picturing her while she was out seeing a friend or buying a mirror or checking her phone. She was really becoming a public name and the public wanted more. They were about to get it. Before their peaceful Starcross Lovers cosplay began again in May, there were a few more incidents of abuse that Amber claims happened in March. On the 22nd and 23rd of March, Amber texts her mother about Johnny saying, He's nuts mum, violent and crazy. I'm heartbroken that this is who I love. Then at some point in March, Amber also claims that Johnny dangled her dog out of a moving car window and made howling sounds. Scary stuff. However, two months later, they were back to playing happy couple and were pictured enjoying a night out in West Hollywood, along with Keith Richards and Ronnie Wood of the Rolling Stones. When they were pictured a month later out at a restaurant in Moscow where Johnny was promoting The Lone Ranger, the public could have never have known that only a few days earlier, Amber wrote an unsent email in which she wrote that Johnny hurts her physically, writing that she doesn't know whether she will be dealing with him or the monster brought out by his Use of drugs and alcohol. She also refers to him as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. In the same month, Johnny finally speaks up on his breakup with Vanessa in Rolling Stone magazine. The last couple years have been a bit bumpy, he says slowly. At times, certainly unpleasant, but that's the nature of breakups, I guess especially when there are kiddies involved. Relationships are very difficult, especially in the racket that I'm in, because you're constantly away or they're away and it's so hard. It wasn't easy on her. It wasn't easy on me. It wasn't easy on the kids. Well, it seemed that life for the kids was about to get a whole lot more complicated, with Johnny and Amber being pictured with Lily and Jack, his kids with Vanessa, in Japan and Germany. By July 2013, they would have been dating for over a year, so Johnny probably thought it was a good time to bring the family together. July was also the last time Johnny and Amber were pictured together on until the 24th of October, causing a run of breakup articles being put out by the weeklies. Although they still hadn't gone official official, we need that red carpet pick, Amber did an interview for Flair magazine's September issue, addressing her relationship and the media circus surrounding it. It's not part of my professional life. I want to be an artist. I don't want to be a celebrity. You can find pictures of me on the internet, pumping gas, picking up dry cleaning, walking my dog, but nowhere are you going to find pictures of me hanging around at some nightclub. Can you ever imagine yourself in a situation like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie or Kim Kardashian and Kanye West where the world feels like they have a stake in your private life? I would never want it. 2014. Wild Rumours and Rough Times Johnny and Amber finally went red carpet official, arm in arm at the Art of Elysium's 7th Annual Heaven Gala, an event they would visit again as a couple. They looked nervous, but in love, and they really, really were. 14th of January, while leaving a restaurant, Amber tries to hide her left hand, but then completely reveals it when she tries to hide her face. There it is. Now, I don't know how much it costs, but it would eventually cost Johnny and Amber many million dollars. They allegedly got engaged on Christmas Eve and while Vanessa debuted her cute new look on the 16th of January, letting the world know that this bitch had moved on, Johnny and Amber's reps confirmed their engagement the next day to People magazine, a source telling the mag, of course they couldn't be happier to be engaged and excited to share the rest of their lives together. Amber has really taken well to the kids and really enjoys spending time with them. And she's even taken Lily shopping on her own for some bonding time. Sounds great. And a few weeks later, just before the Daily Star releases an article reporting that Johnny and Amber are planning a low-key wedding with barbecue reception on his private island in the Bahamas, Amber is seen out on an afternoon shopping trip with her soon-to-be stepdaughter Lily Rose Depp in LA. 
On the 15th of March, Johnny throws an extravagant engagement party for Amber at Karen Delay House in downtown LA. The 100 person guest list included Lily Rose and Jack, Ovi, Steven Tyler, Marilyn Manson, Mandy Moore, and Ryan Adams. It was truly a splendid affair. Johnny Depp's mother, Betty Sue Palmer, who was going to die in two years, also attended. After Johnny confirms the engagement, showing off his chick ring on Letterman, saying, uh, I know this, I haven't seen it, but I know it ahead of time, and now I see it, that you're wearing, wearing uh, uh, an, you have an engagement ring. I do, I have a female engagement ring on yeah. my finger. Yeah, but you, you are the, you're getting married. Well, it's, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's not typical for a m man to wear an engagement ring, is it? No. Uh, <laughs> it was too big for my girl. Really? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so the, the woman you're, uh, who's been on the show, by the way. Amber, yeah. Oh, lovely. He does an interview for Inquirer's April issue, sharing his thoughts on Amber. I am everything that she wouldn't want to be with. In a lot of ways, she's everything that I wouldn't want to be with, because with actors and actresses, it's not an easy deal. But she has a very good perspective on her career. It's an interesting thing when you realize that you are at a point in your life where you are able to dedicate your life to one person to love that person as you do your children so yeah i guess it's a little combination she's a wonderful girl and i'm very lucky talking about vanessa he said we see each other all the time giggle and hang out just like we always did there are no hassles frankly because she is a wonderful woman i love her and she loves me she's a great woman and mum. i have nothing bad to say ever then the interviewer slips in the question that everyone wanted to ask are you going to have kids johnny says as far as having more kids it's easy for me i mean let's face it practicing for it is fun it's so wonderful but yeah the woman most assuredly and definitely has the big gig alma should have the opportunity to have kids if she wants well maybe the lady don't want because in may 2014 amber claims another incident of abuse happened this time extremely violent while they were on a plane from boston to la amber claims that johnny confronted her about a romantic scene that she filmed with james franco and then accused her of having an affair he then allegedly threw objects at her called her a slut and a whore and accused her of enjoying having sex on film sets amber claims when she tried to change seats to get away from him he allegedly provocatively pushed a chair at her and taunted her with the name james franco she says he then slapped her and kicked her in the back as she tried to walk away from him causing her to fall to the floor johnny then throws his boot at her while she is on the floor then passes out in the bathroom for the rest of the flight now this is where it gets a little complicated johnny texted amber after the incident writing i don't know why or what happens but i will never do it again his assistant stephen deuters also texted amber and seemed to confirm that johnny kicked her these are the text messages between johnny's assistant and amber think he's just texted you he's incredibly apologetic and knows that he's done wrong he wants to get better now he's been very explicit about that this morning feel like we're at a critical juncture yes but i don't know how to be around him after what he did to me yesterday i don't know if i can stay with him he wants to see you so much he's distraught don't worry about the flights i'll be taking care of them myself thank you look he thinks he doesn't deserve this obviously he has no idea what he did or the extent that he did it if someone was truly honest with him about how bad it really was he'd be appalled and definitely wouldn't say to me that he doesn't deserve it i'm sad that he doesn't have a better way to really know the severity of his actions yesterday unfortunately for me i remember in full detail everything that happened he was appalled when i told him he kicked you he cried it was disgusting and he knows it i wasn't with him when you sent the second text he read it to me and i said it was the wrong text to send he then sent the third one and sat and cried again after on the bed he's a little lost boy and needs all the help he can get he's so very sorry as he should be he's done this many times before tokyo the island london remember that and i always stay always believe he's going to get better and then every three months or so i'm in the exact same position 
dramatic stuff. Johnny claims that he only gave her a playful tap on the bottom with his foot, and when she reacted badly, he took a pillow into the bathroom and fell asleep there. He absolutely denies any physical or verbal abuse, but would later admit in court that he might have passed out on the toilet. I just added that bit. Anyways, while all this crazy sh was going on behind the scenes, all the public saw was Johnny and Amber attending the Met Gala, and they looked pretty quiche, not gonna lie. Amber also reflected on her engagement to Johnny and her May 2014 cover issue for W Magazine. She was like, I haven't noticed any change in my career, she says guardedly. And for better or worse, I've always had a love life that seemed particularly salacious to some people. Before, it was also seen as unconventional, she adds, alluding to the fact that she had been romantically involved with women. A few months later, in August, another alleged incident of abuse happens. While spending time at Johnny's private island in the Bahamas, where he was detoxing from his pain pill dependency, Johnny allegedly pushed Amber, slapped her, grabbed her by the hair, and kicked the door so hard that it splintered. Of course, Johnny denies all of the above. While the public didn't know about any of this alleged turmoil happening behind the scenes, there were still rumours of turmoil in the relationship, and in December, people released an article that alleged Amber was having second thoughts about the marriage. A source saying, There is no rush to marry at the moment, says a longtime friend of Depp. Johnny is crazy in love with Amber, but there is turmoil in the relationship. This hesitation on Amber's part could have been unleashed by Johnny's weird and off putting behaviour at the Hollywood Film Awards on November the 14th. He was slurring his words, struggling to stay in one place. It wasn't a good look for Johnny, but hardly surprising by now. He also displayed similar drunken behaviour at the Grammys earlier that year. His behaviour was probably influenced by the extreme pressure his career was under at the time. Johnny talked about the schizophrenic pace his career was moving at in the November issue of Details magazine. It's like being a dog at the track. They expect you to live up to some race you happen to be in and won accidentally. From that first second, you're nothing more than a commodity. They have expectations of another pirate. It's great if something works, boy that's killer, but god to have that as your design is ugly I think. I'm f shy man, I'm living in a sense like a fugitive, I don't like to be in social situations, it's fine for me in a weird way having to run and hide, less and less I have the opportunity to observe because I'm the one being observed. It's been insane, from white bulgur to the mad hatter, you can imagine the schizophrenia. However, even with the rumours of relationship troubles, the Mirror put out another article on the 19th of December that Johnny was planning to throw Amber a surprise wedding on New Year's Eve at this party he had already organised at his island. And although that didn't happen, they would get married soon, they were pictured celebrating New Year's Eve together out in West Hollywood. Little did we know. 2015, a literal f***ing explosion. Again quieting the breakup rumours, Johnny and Amber were seen packing on the PDA in January, at the same gala where they debuted their relationship last year, looking more loved up than ever. On the 22nd, Johnny showed up to the LA premiere of his new movie, Mordecai, wearing a gold band on the same finger he had previously worn his engagement ring on. On the 29th, Page Six put out an article that said Johnny and Amber were rumoured to be marrying in early February at Johnny's private island in the Bahamas. Little did they know there was a much bigger story that allegedly took place only two days before. While Amber and Johnny were in Tokyo to promote his new movie, Johnny allegedly slapped Amber just before they were about to head out, grabbed her by the hair and kneeled on her back. Johnny claims that this is impossible because Lily Rose and Jack were with him, so he would never have acted this way. However, while his children were apparently staying with them, it was indicated in court that the kids were in a different room at the time of this alleged incident. While they still went to the film premiere of Mordecai, in Tokyo after the incident, and Amber wore a backless dress. She claims that she checked her back obsessively to make sure her injuries were not visible, but Johnny says she never had any injuries and denies the abuse. Hmm, well. They still got married like a week and a half later, so who knows. On February the 8th, people report that Johnny and Amber got married at his island that weekend, and the first photos taken by drone come out 10 days later. 
Mm, kind of creepy. Sadly, there was no honeymoon because Amber had to jet off to London to film her new film, London Field, which she would eventually be sued for for $10 million. Lamau. The next month is when things got really messy and the most severe of the alleged abuse takes place. Amber claims that Johnny put her in fear of her life while he was suffering from manic depression, bipolar disorder and a pattern of repeated drug-induced psychosis and violence. F allegedly, this is what happened. Saying this so I don't need to keep saying allegedly. Okay. Johnny and Amber rented an isolated house in Australia for three days. And as soon as they got there, Johnny started drinking and taking ecstasy. He apparently put her through a hostage situation by conducting a constant cycle of physical abuse. He first shoved her into a ping pong table that collapsed under her weight. Then he threw bottles at a glass door, breaking the panes and leaving glass shards everywhere. Johnny then grabbed Amber, ripped off her nightgown, leaving her nude, barefoot and covered in alcohol and glass but he wasn't finished one more time allegedly johnny then grabbed amber by the hair and choked her against the refrigerator in the kitchen when she tried to stand up she kept sliding on the glass shards on the floor ouch he threw amber like a little rag doll away from his visage and she tried to leg it while johnny was throwing objects and alcohol at her that situation ends there allegedly most probably with johnny passed out on the floor or something amber also claims that at one point during these three days johnny grabbed her by the neck and collarbone and slammed her against the countertop apparently she tried to brace herself on the counter and alleviate the pressure against her neck but her arms and feet kept slipping on the spilled alcohol and glass she says that she still has slash marks and scars on her forearms and the bottoms of her feet amber claims she was eventually able to escape and lock herself in the bedroom and that when she emerged she saw that johnny had ravaged the house scrolling graffiti everywhere and leaving chunks of raw meat around the house okay all in all it's confirmed that johnny caused around seventy-five thousand dollars worth of damage to the home as you can guess johnny sees this incident entirely differently he claims that in australia amber went berserk when he asked her to sign a postnuptial agreement she allegedly hurled a vodka bottle at him which shattered on a marble countertop and sprayed johnny with glass shards he states that if amber had truly been in danger and needed to escape she could have done so by leaving out the sliding glass door of their bedroom which led to a patio she also had her celly which he says she could have used to call the fuzz amber does have pictures of the alleged scars on her arms and feet but johnny's attorneys claim that these are self-harm scars that amber created as part of her hoax anyways also early in march johnny severs his hand which comes out in the media at the time as johnny depp hurt himself while on location for pirates of the caribbean and had to return to the states for surgery but we never got any details of what actually happened until two years later when e news released the exclusive story that apparently johnny cut his fingertip off in a fit of rage by slamming a telephone against the wall and then dipped the remaining stub in paint to write Billy Bob on a mirror, whom he accused Amber of having an affair with. Johnny completely denies the story and says his finger was severed when Amber threw a vodka bottle at him and a glass shard cut the tip off. TMZ released the exclusive pictures two months after the E! News story came out. And if you're interested, you can search for them online, but like they're kind of ill and I'm not interested. No thanks. A few months later, Johnny and Amber's first proper worldwide media circus begins with the whole dog thing. Basically, they flew into Australia on a private jet with their dogs, Johnny Dog's Boo and Amber's Dog Pistol, but they never declared the animals to customs officials. Basically, Australia was like, we're gonna kill your dogs if you don't take them back. And they did take them back, but Amber was now in big legal trouble. It became a whole media story and really highlighted the couple for the first time. Amber was also not exactly getting lead roles yet, but was now playing supporting roles in 
big blockbuster movies like Magic Mike Extra Extra Large and The Danish Girl. She was becoming more of a name in her own right and this whole dubri with the dogs really helped shine a light on her. For the first time ever, Johnny and Amber were like a real celebrity couple. They were both players in Hollywood and they each had name recognition, even though Johnny's was much stronger than Amber's at the time. After not being seen together for five months, Johnny and Amber are photographed at the Venice Film Festival, smiling, laughing, they really tore it. This is over a month after another alleged incident of abuse happened in Asia during their honeymoon. Amber wrote about the alleged altercation in her diary. A fight was terrible. Johnny at one point found himself with his shirt wrapped around my neck. Amazing to think about the precision, coordination that required, considering the close circumstances. I don't even know how I wound up with this huge, rather annoying knot on the back of my head. Well, all was still fine on the public front, with Johnny joining Jimmy on Jimmy Kimmel in September, where he talked about the dog incident and also shared he might take Amber's last name. Well, there, you know, I mean, you know, he, you know, this sort of like weird sweaty painted uh gut man yeah who 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 decided that you know like a uh, two uh five six inch uh, yorkshire t- uh, teacup yorkshire terriers <laughs> uh would harm the country in some way he's got a point <laughs> uh, Especially when you consider that Australia has the most poisonous creatures on Earth. Yeah, that is true. But then, on Thanksgiving Day, November 26, Amber claims after the guests for their Thanksgiving party leave, Johnny threw her around the room, threw a wine glass and a glass decanter at her, bust her lip open, and left her with a knot on the back of her head. The videos they took at the party were used in court, and Johnny claimed Amber's happy tone in the videos was an indication that she was faking her abuse. However, Amber replied that the tone of her voice on the video is unrelated to the altercation, and that she would act normal around their friends. She would claim one more incident of abuse in 2015, and that sometime in December, Johnny allegedly grabbed Amber by the scalp and dragged her by the hair through the stairwell, office, living room, kitchen, bedroom, and guest room, ripping out clumps of her hair. She says he also slapped her, headbutted her, dragged her onto a bed, and punched her, breaking the bed frame and threatening to kill her. Amber states that she feared he was in a blackout state and could unintentionally kill her. Johnny allegedly does all of this knowing well that she's scheduled to appear on James Corden's show the next day. Shortly after the incident, Hurd sees a private nurse named Erin Boram, who treated both Amber and Johnny about her injuries. The medical notes confirm that Amber had a split lip, but Boram briefly looked at the client's scalp but was unable to visualize the hair loss the client described. Johnny says that her appearance on the show indicates that she was not injured from any abuse. A stylist says that she saw Amber up close in good lighting for a substantial period of time and did not see any injuries on her. However, after the show, she says that Amber came up to her and said, can you believe I just did that show with two black eyes? 2016, defecation, dissolution, and dead people. Drunken love? Who knows? Right at the beginning of the year, at the Palm Springs International Film Festival, Johnny gives a drunken speech about how much he appreciates Amber, and also gives an interview about how Amber's life isn't that easy. I also have to thank my um, my wife, Amber, for... Um for putting up with me, for living with all these characters, <laughs> which can't be easy. Um, well, it's hard for me. It's got to be hard for her. You know? <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I want to thank my, my wife, Amber. You thanked your wife, Amber, because she has slept with so many different characters that you portray. I am sure there's a lot of truth to that, that it's not easy. It's not. It's not easy for uh, for your spouse in, yeah. in terms of 
um, when you're playing a character, especially with a lot of prosthetics or something like that, and you've got a lot of work to do in terms of tra transformation. I, I arrived home one night. I didn't want to take the old old man Tonzo makeup off because I just thought I'll leave it because I got to put it on tomorrow morning. So I went home and I slept in it. And I didn't, she was already asleep and I didn't say anything. <laughs> And then at a certain point, she reached over and kind of put her arm around me and started flipping out because, <laughs> that I mean, be. it was so horrible. Now, whatever you think about this case, if you think they both abuse each other or just one of them did, it's very obvious just because of the surplus of footage we have, they were both very drunk basically through their entire marriage. I've already shown quite a few videos of Johnny, but it's really easy to find videos of Amber drunk online too. Hell yeah. Who? Desire. And, and repulsion. <laughs> the best. Goals. <laughs> A beautiful concept. That one I'd say worth dying for. Who cares? The best exile. Kiwis. So that's when you should ask me about Barnaby Joyce. Kiwi. I mean, really? Why? When chocolate is not available. Yes, please. Jason Momoa, otherwise known as Mira. She has her own name. Haven't found it yet. At least I hope not. Beauty, inside and out. So, here we are in Paris. You know? Cash sitting in traffic. Wow, someone's got a sense of humor in this lineup. <laughs> Michelle Dauber, the founder of Enough is Enough Voter Project said, it is time to end the culture that protects the careers of powerful men who abuse women and survivors. And to put this issue in front of you, the voters. Okay, so if you haven't registered to vote yet, what are you waiting for? Get out of here, get out of there, and find these groups and register now. Please. Just a month later, Johnny would give another drunken speech about his love for Amber at another festival. She was in my head, so I tracked her down. We tracked each other down. Actually, incidentally, it was amazing. It was at the first day of press on the Rum Diary. Then we married that very day. Nurse, he's escaped. Then a few months later, just before you know what, Johnny and Amber released this video apologizing to Australia about their dogs. It's literally crazy how much attention this clip got and it really shone a light on Johnny and Amber. She was eventually let off and issued with a one month good behavior bond after admitting to falsifying customs documents the year prior. On the 21st of April, Johnny arrives late to Amber's 30th birthday party, allegedly drunk and high. She alleges he was violent once again, and then the next day, feces is found on their bed. Johnny claims that Amber or one of her friends defecated on it. Amber claims that her dog has bowel issues and is likely the culprit. I guess we'll never know. A few days later, they head to Palm Springs, along with Lily Rose, to celebrate Amber's birthday, where they spent the weekend lounging by the pool. On the 2nd of May, Amber hits the Met Gala without Johnny, who was busy promoting Alice through the looking glass, and a few days later, he appeared drunk at a press conference in London. Then tragedy strikes, and Johnny's mother dies on the 20th of May. Sad times, sad times. The next day, one 
final showdown. In court documents obtained by E! Online, Alma states that the day after Johnny's mother passing, they had a peaceful conversation before Johnny began obsessing about something that was untrue and his demeanor changed dramatically. Johnny, inebriated and high, demanded Amber call mutual friend Io Tillett Wright. As Amber spoke with Wright on the phone, Johnny apparently then ripped the cell phone out her hands and began yelling obscenities at Io. From there, she states he then grabbed the cell phone, wound up his arm like a baseball pitcher, and threw the cell phone at me, striking my cheek and eye with great force. He would then forcibly pull back her hair as she attempted to stand from the sofa, before eventually striking her and violently grabbing her face. The LAPD received a call from Wright at 10.09pm. Their log reads, Female stated she was on phone with her friend and she began screaming at her husband. Subject Amber heard, husband Johnny heard. When the LAPD arrived, Johnny had already left. The officers testified that Amber was crying but they didn't notice any injuries to her face. They stated that they looked around the apartment and did not see broken glass or any other broken items. Johnny denied this incident. He claims that he only tossed his phone on the couch and that it did not hit Amber, claiming that she started yelling at him after he walked across the room. Amber claims that Johnny offered her money if she agreed to not report the incident. The next day, Amber texted the nurse she shared with Johnny. It's okay, but he was completely delusional and crazed. Hit me in the face several times while on the phone to Io. Two people testified the building concierge and one of Johnny's friends that they saw Amber the day following the alleged abuse and that she didn't have any bruises. Amber also texted Elon Musk, who was a friend at the time, telling him that she's going to get a restraining order against Johnny. Elon offers to arrange 24-7 protection. Lol. At some point, Amber poses for this insta pic with her hair apparently covering the right side of her face where the bruise was said to be, but the post was quickly deleted. She decides to leave him that day and files for divorce the next. The Divorce On the 25th of May 2016, TMZ exclusively announced that Amber had filed for divorce from Johnny on the 23rd of May. In her statement, she cited irreconcilable differences and requested $50,000 per month in spousal support. Her petition also requested protection for her dog Pistol, but the judge rejected this. Amber stated, During the entirety of our relationship, Johnny has been verbally and physically abusive to me. Johnny has had a long-held and widely acknowledged public and private history of drug and alcohol abuse. Her petition included photographs of injuries to her face, allegedly caused by Johnny in the showdown two days beforehand. In response to Amber's allegations and divorce petition, Johnny filed a memorandum in which he denied all abuse. Amber is attempting to secure a premature financial resolution by alleging abuse. Her current application for a temporary restraining order along with her financial requests appear to be in response to negative media attention she received earlier this week after filing for divorce. The next day, Johnny's reps shared a statement to People and the most recent and tragic loss of his mother, Johnny will not respond to any of the salacious false stories, gossip, misinformation and lies about his personal life. Hopefully, the dissolution of this short marriage will be resolved quickly. On the 27th of May, Amber appeared in court and was granted a temporary restraining order against Johnny, stating that she lives in fear that Johnny will return to the residence, unannounced to terrorize me, physically and emotionally. Photos of her face as she arrived show her with a bruise below her right eye, and after court finished, she was pictured breaking down in tears on the ride home. Well, Johnny wasn't going to go down so easy and his family came to his side to support him. In a since-deleted Instagram post, Johnny's daughter, Lily Rose, fought for her father, saying, My dad is the sweetest, most loving person I know. He's been nothing but a wonderful father to my little brother and I, and everyone who knows him would say the same. She also posted a picture of her looking really creepy as a baby. Vanessa also had something to say and shared a handwritten letter to TMZ.
To whom it may concern, Johnny Depp is the father of my two children. He is a sensitive, loving, and loved person, and I believe with all my heart that these recent allegations being made are outrageous. In all the years I have known Johnny, he has never been physically abusive with me, and this looks nothing like the man I lived with for 14 wonderful years. Sincerely, Vanessa Paradis. May 27th, 2016 Los Angeles. His less relevant ex-wife, Lori Ann Allison, also said that Johnny was never physical with her. But like, who cares? In a now infamous release, People magazine used one of Amber's abuse photographs for the cover of their new issue. Literally iconic. But Amber wasn't the only one with iconic behavior. A month later, on the 3rd of July, Johnny is pictured on the red carpet, with his previous finger tattoo for Amber changed from Slim, a rumored nickname for Amber, to Scum. A day before Amber testified under oath in a deposition on the 13th of August, TMZ surfaces an exclusive video that shows Johnny kicking and slamming doors and cabinets in their kitchen. It was heavily edited and therefore not allowed as evidence in court cases, but it certainly influenced public opinion. Amber has since said that she wasn't the one that released the video. In the deposition, Amber admits that she sometimes threw objects at Johnny, but only did so in self-defense. She calls his alter ego that comes out during abuse the monster. Johnny and I refer to his other personality, the part of him that is present when he beats me up. We call that the monster and have called that the monster for many years. She also states that she heard from two different people that Johnny pushed Kate Moss down a flight of stairs, which will be relevant later. The full deposition is not online, but there are a few clips. Only a few days later, on the 16th of August, TMZ learns that Amber and Johnny have officially settled their divorce case. In addition to dismissing the case with prejudice, meaning she can't refile, Amber also redrew her restraining order petition. As part of the process, Johnny agreed to pay Amber a $7 million settlement. Two days later, Amber put out a statement saying that she planned to donate the settlement money amongst two charities, the ACLU and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. Well, the ACLU came forward in April 2022 to state that she had only donated less than half of the $3 million she pledged to give. So make of that what you will. The fallout. Before the Johnny Amber case took a life of its own in the media, Amber did get up to a little something else, and we should talk a little something else about it. You know what I'm saying? Elon Musk had first pursued Amber in 2012, while she was with Johnny. During the filming of Machete Kills, Elon used to send emails to the film's director, Robert Rodriguez, requesting a meeting with Amber. If there is a party or event with Amber, I'd be interested in meeting her, just out of curiosity. Allegedly, she is a fan of George Orwell and Ayn Rand. Most unusual. Rodriguez did set up a dinner, but Amber, who was dating Johnny, didn't show up. Elon tried again. Can you send her a note saying, I would like to get together for lunch in LA? I'm not angling for a date. I know she's in a long-term relationship, but Amber just seems like an interesting person to meet. Well, it would take four years for them to meet, or allegedly three, but before the divorce was even finalized, Amber and Elon were pictured out together in London, along with Cara Delevingne. They wouldn't be pictured again until they went Instagram official, with Amber's iconic Cheeky on the 14th of April, 2016. 17. They would sadly end things, not too sadly for Claire Boucher, in August 2017, about a year after they got together. Amber would again take to Insta and let the world know what they needed to know. Amber was over. Being in the public eye means having to explain yourself to so many people so much of the time. In this case, I'd like to remain more quiet. Although we have broken up, Elon and I care deeply for one another and remain close. Thank you for the continued support, respect and privacy during these difficult, very human times. Elon also commented, just to clear up some of the press storm this weekend, although Amber and I did break up, we are still friends, remain close and love one another. Long distance relationships when both partners have intense work obligations are always difficult, but who knows what the future holds. Literally schizo behavior. 
Um, anyways, back to Jamba. On the 18th of November 2016, Johnny made a surprise appearance at the end of the first Fantastic Beast movie in a cameo performance as the legendary villain and dark wizard Gellert Grindelwald. Or Gellert, I don't know. This was a big surprise and for a lot of people, not a nice one. I always like surprises. Hello, JK Rowling, Fantastic Beasts. The Harry Potter universe is all about being against the abuse of power, and yet you cast a known abuser? Oh no, JK Rowling, please rethink casting Johnny Depp. Winona Ryder stole something once and her career plummeted. Johnny Depp abused his wife and he continues to get roles. I love double standards. Um, well, Winona Ryder is a bit kooky, like you can see it in the eyes. Yeah. Basically, Johnny wasn't going down without a fight, and Amber wasn't either. On the 13th of December, Amber penned an open op-ed for Porter magazine, sharing her experience as a female coming forward with allegations of domestic violence. When a woman comes forward to speak about injustice or her suffering, instead of aid, respect and support, she will be met with hostility, skepticism and shame. Her motives will be questioned and her truth ignored powerful stuff. The next year, early in January, the divorce is finally finalized after a judge called ceasefire. Amber's attorney telling people, it is a great day. All Amber wanted was a divorce and now she has it. In the words of Gerald Ford, our long national nightmare is over. The judge denied Johnny's request to impose a 100,000 sanction on Amber for allegedly delaying the proceeding. He also had to pay $500,000 towards Amber's legal fees, and they both signed non-disparagement and non-disclosure agreements. Amber kept the dogs, Johnny kept his real estate and money. Well, most of it. The two star-crossed divorcees issued a joint statement that read, Our relationship was intensely passionate and at times volatile, but always bound by love. Neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. There was never any intent of physical or emotional harm. Then, what we know of today as the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial started when The Sun, a British tabloid known for making legendary headlines and covers such as this and this, published an article on the 27th of April 2018 referring to Johnny as a wife beater. A month later, on the 1st of June, Johnny and his attorney file a libel lawsuit against News Group Newspapers Limited, which publishes The Sun. She was about to get real. I mean, it had been pretty real, but it was about to get like really, really real. Over the next few months, Rolling Stone and GQ published two legendary profiles of Johnny. Rolling Stone first in July with the trouble with Johnny Depp. In the article, Johnny boasts about spending absurd amounts of money on wine. It's insulting to say that I spent $30,000 on wine because it was far more. Admits to getting his lines fed to him through an earpiece, reflects on the deaths of his mother and friend Tom Petty, and freely drinks and smokes weed throughout the writer's time with him. He speaks about the pain he felt following the divorce, though he couldn't get too specific because of the NDA. I was as low as I believe I could have gotten, says Depp in a dead voice. The next step was, you're going to arrive somewhere with your eyes open and you're going to leave there with your eyes closed. I couldn't take the pain every day. I poured myself a vodka in the morning and started writing until the tears filled my eyes and I couldn't see the pages anymore. I kept trying to figure out what I'd done to deserve this. I tried being kind to everyone, helping everyone, being truthful to everyone. The truth is most most important to me. Then in October, the more defiant Johnny Depp will not be buried from GQ. The last three or four years has felt like a perverse situation that was inflicted on me. It hurts. I could feel people look at me differently because of the accusations towards you. And then people start putting things in magazines. He's insane. He needs to take a sanity test. You know, ludicrous stuff. But the only thing that I could do was know what I still know. Ultimately, the truth will come out in all of this and I will be standing on the right side of the roaring rapids. I hope other people will be too. I know the truth and if I had to walk away from all of it today, the job, the career, all of it and go to the loo, then fine. 
I've got nothing to prove to anyone because I've never been in competition with anyone. I don't buy into that shit. I'm not interested in receiving any spray painted action figures. You know, maybe whatever this thing is, whatever I leave behind, you know, my legacy to my kids or the people, I haven't watched 98% of that shit. It may be completely insane, it may be crap, it may be interesting, I don't f***ing know what it is. But what I do know is that I did something, I tried something different for a period of years. Did it work? Who the f*** knows? But I did it, and I'm fine to stop. Well, amongst all this new Johnny publicity, Amber wanted to share her own story, her pain, how she was treated. So on the 18th of December 2018, she releases an open letter with the Washington Post addressing her experience as a woman speaking up about domestic violence and what backlash she faced. Two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. Friends and advisors told me I would never again work as an actress, that I would be blacklisted. A movie I was attached to recast my role. I had just shot a two-year campaign as the face of a global fashion brand, and the company dropped me. Questions arose as to whether I would be able to keep my role of Mira in the movies Justice League and Aquaman. I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. Imagine a man powerful as a ship, like the Titanic. That ship is a huge enterprise. When it strikes an iceberg, there are a lot of people on board desperate to patch up holes, not because they believe in or even care about the ship, but because their own fates depend on the enterprise. I write this as a woman who had to change my phone number weekly because I was getting death threats. For months, I rarely left my apartment, and when I did, I was pursued by camera drones and photographers on foot, on motorcycles and in cars. Tabloid outlets that posted pictures of me spun them in a negative light. I felt as though I was in trial in the court of public opinion and my life and livelihood depended on myriad judgments far beyond my control. Johnny said he was fine with stopping acting and that's what happened. A few days after Amber's open letter, Disney's film production chief seemed to confirm that Johnny would no longer be involved with the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise in an attempt to bring in a new energy and vitality. Johnny Depp will not be buried. On the 1st of March 2019, in the wake of Amber's open letter, Johnny filed a defamation suit against the Washington Post for the sum of $50 million, a case that would take a whole two years to actually be seen in court. The suit outlined that while he wasn't named in the op-ed, it was clear Amber was talking about him. Johnny also blaming the piece for costing him his role in the Pirates franchise. The op-ed depended on the central premise that Ms. Heard was a domestic abuse victim and that Mr. Depp perpetrated domestic violence against her. He claimed that Amber is not a victim of domestic abuse, she is a perpetrator. Stating that her abuse accusations were an elaborate hoax to generate positive publicity, that she painted on her bruises, and that the claims were conclusively refuted by two separate responding police officers, a litany of neutral third party witnesses, and 87 newly obtained surveillance camera videos. Johnny also submitted pictures of himself with bruises on his face that he claims were caused by Amber. This picture isn't from the 2019 suit, but it's just an example. Of course, Amber filed to dismiss the suit. In an incredible 300-page motion that outlined a number of intimate details of their time together, Amber declared that Johnny often would not remember his delusional and violent conduct after he came out of his drunk or medicated state. Because I loved Johnny, I had believed his multiple promises that he could and would get better. I was wrong. She also included photo evidence of bruises and scars, clumps of hair apparently torn from her head, and pictures of property damage allegedly caused by Johnny. All told, she alleged 14 total incidents of abuse and claimed that he threatened to kill her several times. Fast forward a year later, on the 31st of January 2020, the Daily Mail releases an exclusive audio file obtained from a well-placed source where Amber admits to hitting Johnny at some point during their relationship. Because I love you and I do not want to leave you I 
do not want a divorce. I do not want you out of my life. I just want peace. If things get physical, we have to separate. We have to be apart from one another. Whether it's for an hour or 10 hours or a day, we must. There can be no physical violence I towards each other. I agree about the physical violence, but separating for a day or I'm, night I'm, and taking a night off from our marriage. No, no, no. That? All I'm saying is we need to take whatever time we need, you need or I need, to kind of let things settle for a minute so that we don't <laughs> kill each other or <laughs> worse, you know, really kill each other or, or break up or whatever if the fight escalates to the point of where it's just insulting for both of us uh, or if it gets to that physical the violence that's when we just say look Let's go to our corners, man. You, you, you hang wherever you want, baby. I'm going in the office, and I'm just gonna sit there and try and de-jellify my brain. I can't promise you that I'll be perfect. I can't promise you I won't get physical again. God, I sometimes get so mad, I lose it. I can promise you I'm gonna do everything to change. I promise you. I'm not going to throw around divorce. I will not say divorce unless I really need it. I love you. I want you to be my wife. I want to be your husband. I want to be a good husband. And if I haven't been, you know, I'll do everything I can to find out how to be a good husband. A week later, they release another tape where Amber is telling Johnny that because she's smaller than him, no one would believe him if he tried to argue they had a fair fight. Yes. I, you know, it's a fair fight. It sees how many people believe or side with you. It doesn't matter if it's a fair, fair, fair fight, my ass. It, 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 exactly, because you're, bit, you're bigger and you're stronger. And so when I say that I thought you could kill me, that doesn't mean you count her with you also, uh, that, that, that you lost your own finger. I, I am not trying to attack you here. I'm just trying to point out the fact of why I said call 911. Because I was, you are, you had your hands on me after you threw a phone in my face, and I just got crazy in the past, and I truly thought I need to stop this madness before I get hurt. Oh my God. And I never think about myself that way. I never defend myself that way. I never see myself as a victim. All it's too right. fault, you know? All right, yeah. And I, 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 when they came, I did not cooperate with them. It has been used against me, not by the media, by your side. Who said, look. What do you mean? Where's the media? It's all out in the media. Why is my... DMV is in your pocket and you don't even know it? Oh, I mean, it's... Well, I was at the courthouse while TMZ is posting things. At the courthouse, while I'm at the courthouse, they're posting things about the cops never coming, right? Then we, we provide proof. Then they say, oh, well, just one, one, one set of police officers. Then they retract their story, but they don't actually retract it like an objective media source would. No, what do they do? They just come out with a new lie. They go, oh, well, it was just one pair of cops. And she said it was two. And I said, no, here's the proof. We just subpoenaed the building for the actual security records to prove that was wrong. Okay, then what did they do? They came out with a new lie, a different lie. Okay, well, it was this, it was this. I mean, every step of the way I've had to take been because that that news source in Marty's pocket, in Laura, like that's what Laura's. But I'm telling you now, if, if, if we go, if, if I file, if, if they file the papers tomorrow, which means I, the, the I gotta file before we go to court on Friday. Yeah. If they file <clears throat> those papers. It's, it's very bad for both of us, okay? 
About these clips, Johnny's lawyers said these tapes containing Amber Heard's chilling confessions of violence further expose and destroy her abuse hoax. Amber's lawyers said anyone familiar with the dynamics of domestic abuse would immediately recognize what is really going on here. Throughout the extended tape recording that Johnny Depp vindictively turned over to the press, Ms. Heard repeatedly attempts to placate Mr. Depp, ignore his accusations and force him to acknowledge what was really happening in their relationship. Well, if these calls achieved anything, they certainly drummed up a lot of public interest in the case. So when the British libel trial finally began on the 7th of July 2020, it was covered in the news like that time Kate Moss snorted coke in a loo in Nelson Mandela's house. Some highlights include Amber's full unsent 2013 email alleging Johnny's abuse that she wrote after the whole disco bloodbath fiasco was read in court. It's really long, but I'll just read some of the most important parts. I just don't know if I can do this anymore. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Half of you I love, madly. The other half scares me. I can't take him. The problem is I never really know or understand which one I'm dealing with until it's too late. The drinking assures me that I'm dealing with the monster, the abused, scared, insecure, violent little boy. I just can't tell where the line starts. I fell for you while you were sober. A whole year. How could I know this lay in store for me? How dare you make me fall in love with you, present this other self, your good half, only to rip the mask off once I was in. I feel like the biggest idiot in the world. I put up with so much. I have cleaned sh vomit and piss both literally and figuratively i've been accused of crazy shit, none of which i deserve only to never hear an apology for your booze filled zeal you've hit me repeatedly something you should never have done what a f***ing man you are and none of this would be possible without the booze and drugs None. Near the end of the trial, the concierge for the LA penthouse where Johnny and Amber lived testified that Elon Musk regularly came to visit Amber late at night. Apparently Elon was there so frequently that he had his own key fob to make accessing the building even easier. From March 2015 onwards, Ms. Heard was visited regularly late at night at around 11pm to midnight by Mr. Elon Musk. For his initial visits, I would receive a call from Ms. Heard who he would tell me to give Mr. Musk access to the garage for the building and then send him up to the penthouse. Just before the case was concluded on the 28th of July, Amber admitted to punching Johnny to apparently stop him from pushing her sister down the stairs. I did strike Johnny that day in defense of my sister. He was about to push her down the stairs. In a flash, I reacted in defense of her. In August, Amber filed her own $100 million lawsuit accusing Johnny of orchestrating a false and defamatory smear campaign against her with his defamation lawsuit. While that case was still up in the air, on the 2nd of November 2020, Johnny lost the UK libel case as the Judge Justice Nicole declared the allegations of him being a wife beater substantially true and said that Mr. Depp did assault Ms. Heard. Johnny's attorney said, this decision is as perverse as it is bewildering. We hope that in contrast to this case, the ongoing libel proceedings in America are equitable, with both parties providing full disclosure, rather than one side strategically cherry-picking what evidence can and cannot be relied upon. Johnny and his team now turn their attention to the American libel case, brought on by Amber's Washington Post open letter, which would be Johnny's last chance for justice. A few days later, Johnny was dropped from the Fantastic Beast franchise, releasing a statement via Instagram that he'd been asked to resign by Warner Studios. After Johnny had been ousted from the Fantastic Beast franchise, an online petition started circulating calling for the removal of Amber from the Aquaman sequel. Despite gaining 3.5 million signatures, Amber doesn't lose her role and the film's producer later tells Deadline that the petition was never even considered. On the 25th of March 2021, Johnny lost his appeal over the UK libel ruling. 
But before that happened, a little spoken about article came out in December that I want to just quickly talk about. On the 15th of December 2020, several small outlets revealed that Amber has started being paid in the US to give talks on domestic violence when her case hadn't even been settled yet. The agency website describes her as an outspoken advocate for women's rights and for the civil rights of survivors of all gender-based violence around the world, and states that Amber works with organisations that encourage survivors both personally and politically to come forward and reclaim their power. Amber makes frequent trips to DC to lobby and fight on behalf of the civil rights of women and the innumerable silent survivors of gender-based violence. The eloquent and passionate speaker can be booked for $33,000. Although this information didn't make the rounds at the weeklies, I think it's certainly worth noticing. After a year-long delay, preparation for the US libel case begins as teams for both Johnny and Amber report that they plan to bring a number of high-profile witnesses, including, but not limited to, James Franco, Paul Bettany, Elon Musk, and Ellen Barkin. Text messages between Amber, Jason Momoa, and James Wan, Aquaman's director, are also entered into evidence, as well as exchanges between Johnny and JK Rowling. A few days before the trial begins, Amber announces in a lengthy post to Instagram that she would be taking a break from social media ahead of her defamation trial and hoped to put her tumultuous past with Johnny behind her in its wake. Hopefully, when this case concludes, I can move on, and so can Johnny. I've always maintained a love for Johnny and it brings me great pain to live out the details of our past life together in front of the world. Well, the US trial was even juicier than the British one, with many calling it OJ 2.0. Highlights include Johnny Depp's manager stating that he had a massive $22.5 million deal on the table for a sixth installment of the Pirates of the Caribbean. But when put under cross-examination, he admitted he had not seen a document confirming that specific figure. Amber's psychologist retelling her alleged sexual assault, detailing an incident when Johnny, during their Australia stay, allegedly forced a bottle inside Amber while saying he'd kill her. Amber declared to her psychologist that during this incident, she was concerned as to whether the bottle was the broken one. And of course, the multi-legend triple icon British queen, Kate Moss, testifying in court that no, Johnny didn't push me down those stairs. As you probably all know, on the 1st of June 2022, a verdict was reached and the jury ruled in favour of Johnny, finding that he had proven elements of defamation and that Amber had acted with actual malice. Amber was ordered to pay compensatory damages in the amount of $10 million and punitive damages of $5 million but she was also awarded $2 million in damages after the jury determined that defamation had also occurred. While the verdict was being announced, Amber was present in the courtroom, but Johnny was absent due to a previous commitment. Following the trial, both stars released statements. Johnny's statement? Six years ago, my life, the life of my children, the lives of those closest to me, and also the lives of the people who for many, many years have supported and believed in me were forever changed, all in the blink of an eye. False, very serious and criminal allegations were levied at me via the media, which triggered an endless barrage of hateful content, although no charges were ever brought against me. It had already travelled around the world twice within a nanosecond, and it had a seismic impact on my life and my career. And six years later, the judge gave me my life back. I am truly humbled. Amber's statement, the disappointment I feel today is beyond words. I'm heartbroken that the mountain of evidence still was not enough to stand up to the disproportionate power, influence and sway of my ex-husband. I'm sad I lost this case, but I'm sadder still that I seem to have lost a right I thought I had as an American to speak freely and openly. I feel like I should just add that Johnny's post reached 19 million likes and Amber struggled to reach 500k. Just thought you should know that. Following the trial, Amber's lawyer appeared on the Today Show, revealing that Amber can't pay the $15 million compensatory damages and that she absolutely will be appealing the verdict. Does your client want to appeal? 
Oh, absolutely. And she has some excellent grounds for it. We even had tried to get the UK judgment in to dismiss his case because he already had his shot. Um, and that's one of the issues, but also a number of the evidentiary issues. There was so much evidence that did not come in. Is she able to pay a $10.4 million judgment? Oh, no, absolutely not. Johnny, on the other hand, seemed to be just taking it slow, performing with his friend Jeff Beck at the Royal Albert Hall, where multi-legend triple icon British Queen Kate Moss was in attendance. He also made a TikTok account posting this lo-fi video with a reggae soundtrack I can't play, along with the caption, To all my most treasured, loyal and unwavering supporters, we've been everywhere together. We have seen everything together. We have walked the same road together. We did the right thing together all because you cared and now we will all move forward together you are as always my employers and once again i am whittled down to no way to say thank you even elon musk that horseshoe of a man has something to say about the verdict i hope they both move on at their best they are each incredible and um what do i have to say about the trial Multi-legend, quadruple icon, international royalty, Popcana. Um, I just want to say this. Subscribe.